Hi, I'm Kristen with Simple Pulse, and today I'm going to go through an unboxing and initial setup of the new Simple Pulse system. So I've got it in the box down here. I'm going to open the box and then I'll set it up on this table here. Your box will have a couple of staples in it. So as you're cutting the tape, just make note that you'll have to remove some staples as well. Also important to note that your packing list is on the outside of the box here, so you're going to want to take that packing list and look at the back of it and make sure that everything you ordered is noted on it. So once we have the box open, we can remove some of the loose packing material. And then we've got a stack of paperwork here. And the very first paper you're going to see is read first, unboxing your simple pulse unit. So we're going to start with that. Uh, also in here is information about your lids, your user manual, and then a helpful little booklet about milking. So we're going to start with our unboxing list here. Also on the, box, on the back of the unboxing list, is a, a system components list. And so whether you got the four CFM or the six CFM, this is what came with your unit and where in the box they're located. So first step, remove all loose components and packing material, leaving white unit in box. So we've got some loose items here, your lids, the inflation brush, Set all those to the side here. We've got a box here. Our milking inflations and milk line. Okay, and then what's left is our white unit. So we're going to go to step two. Step two says take white unit out of box. Note, white unit is 40 to 50 pounds. Use molded in handles on side of unit to lift out of box. Place on protected flat surface. So we're gonna place it up here on this table. And I notice on the white unit, there is a sticker that says heavy. Lift with molded in handles. And I'm gonna lift it to where I can read this sticker the correct way. That's the packing material. So I'm going to lift it using the handles. And set it on a flat surface. Okay, next step. Step three, remove box of jars from inside white units. So that's this right here. These are the jars, if you order jars. Step four, remove wooden shipping support from bottom of white unit. Place white unit on its back. Right this way, this is referring to this piece of wood. Place it on its back. Use the provided 532nd inch Allen wrench to remove the bolts. Provided tools and loose parts are in the narrow box. So I'm going to open this box here. bag with some tools in it. So there's two different Allen wrenches here, so this is I'm going to use the bigger one. Put 
We're going to save this wood and all of these bolts for future use if we need to uh, transport or ship our system. Okay, next step. Install feet. So we're going to move this board out of the way. Okay, so if basic unit will sit on the ground, screw feet onto bottom of white unit with included 532nd inch Allen wrench. If you'll be mounting your unit, you can choose whether or not you want the feet installed. So I will go ahead and install the feet. They're in another bag in that narrow box. started by hand and then tighten them using the Allen wrench. Okay, now the feet are installed, we can move to the next step. Step number six, locate user guide and quick setup guide attached to side of unit. So the user guide we found earlier in the pack of papers and the quick setup guide. It is attached to the side of your unit for easy and quick reference. Step seven, remove vacuum pump shipping support. So in order to ship these from us to you, there is shipping support protecting the vacuum pump during transit. So first step is remove back cover from white unit using provided 332nd inch Allen wrench. So that's going to be the other smaller Allen wrench. Okay, next step, replace back cover. So we're going to replace the back cover just like we removed it. With our tool here. Continue until you've replaced all seven of those screws. We're 
refer to mounting kit instructions if you order the mounting kit for your system. There are two slots here in the back of the system, and that is for the mounting kit. Okay, next step, follow instructions on quick setup guide to set up your milking system. Okay, so now that we're done with the unboxing of our unit, we're going to refer to our quick setup guide that's attached to the side of the system. So step one, actually, it's important to know that you don't want to unbox and set your system up for the first time while you've got goats on a milk stand waiting to be milked. Make sure that you take enough time to familiarize yourself with the system and uh, get it set up without goats uh, pressuring you. Goats only have you know, a limited attention span on the, on the milking stand. Uh, it's also important to know that um, don't attempt to milk two goats at once your first time out of the gate. Set it up to milk one goat. Be comfortable with the system. It might take a week and then add that second set of lines up. Okay, step one, locate where you will use your milker. Milker will need to be plugged into a 110 volt grounded outlet. Right, so it's got a cord here for the vacuum pump. Must be used in a dry location, placed on flat level surface, high capacity cart or mounted to wall. And see user guide for mounting instructions. So right now we're just gonna set it up on this table here. Got enough room to plug into an outlet. Okay, step two install float valve and overflow jar. So we are going to locate those items. And again, on the back of your unboxing guide, it tells us where those are. So um, in the overflow box, we can see that the overflow jar and the float valve is in that. So that's this long box here. So here's the jar. And then inside the jar is our float valve. The float valve has two balls and you will want to make sure that both of them stay in it. Okay, so push float valve at an angle into center of overflow jar location until it firmly snaps into place. So that is right under here. And so it snapped into place. And then we are going to firmly screw half gallon overflow jar into unit hand tight. Okay, so that is done. Step three. Step three refers to all of your maintenance filters. So first we're going to install the clean air filter. Remove blue hose from clean air filter on front of unit. Remove the blue hose, unscrew upper filter housing, insert clean air filter white. So those filters were in a bag in this long box. So we're going to insert the white one here. Screw on upper filter housing, hand tight. Reattach blue hose to port on filter housing. Okay, next is the muffler silencer filter. Remove clear hose, so it's over here. Unscrew the upper filter housing. Insert muffler silencer filter, which is yellow. And then we're gonna screw that filter housing back on. Again, just hand tight and reattach our hose. Uh, install supply valve filters. So these are your supply valves here. If you have a 4 CFM system, most likely you just have one of these. Uh, if you have the 6 CFM, you, it will come with two. So the supply valve filters goes on the top of these. So in this case, we have two of them. So we have the filter and a barbed fitting. So we are going to put the filter on first and then we will screw the barbed fitting onto it. Your user guide contains lots of information as to uh, maintenance on these filters and how often they should be checked and cleaned, so make sure you're referring to that. Next, we are going to assemble collection containers, jars, and or buckets. So 
we are going to screw our, in this case, this one came with jars, so we're going to assemble our all-in-one lids and then put them on the jars. Okay, so we have a jar and then an all-in-one lid. These lids will come with a sample pack of about 30 filters and your system will come with a filter storage jar. On these lids, it's important to remember to insert your gaskets. It will not work without those gaskets inserted. There is paperwork on the lids with a lot of information. These black plugs can be used when you're transporting your milk and you don't want anything getting into it. Okay, so that goes there. Um, so we're going to attach short supply line to collection container and barbed fitting on white supply valve. So this system was set up as a double milking system. So it came with two milking lines and two supply lines. So those are, they come on these hose holders on the side of your unit. So we'll take one, this says air. So we're gonna install that there and then onto the supply valve. If you're milking one goat and only using one supply valve, you will turn this one to the closed position. Next, attach milk lines to system. Attach pulsator line to pulsator Make sure there's a plug on other port of pulsator attached milk line to collection container. Your pulsator will come with a plug on both ports. So we're going to take one off and use one side for now. Your milking lines, you will need, this one came with two, so I've got two sets here. You will need to attach your pulsator line to the small Y. And your milk line to the larger Y. Your pulsator line is smaller in diameter and has a black line on it. Your milk line is either transflow or silicone. This one is silicone. The transflow has a blue line through it. Okay, so now we are going to attach the pulsator line to the pulsator. be kind of tricky at first but it'll stretch as it gets used and then our milk line to the port on our jar that says milk okay next we're going to plug in system and there will be a little repeated information here it says Verify all vacuum pump support material was removed during unboxing. Remember to remove all the wooden and styrofoam support material during unboxing. And then it says to remove the sticker over the power button and it says remove packing material and shipping support around vacuum pump before operation. Caution, tools required, refer to unpacking guide that refers to the shipping support. Okay, so we're gonna remove that sticker. Uh, Vacuum gauge, read and understand sticker on front of gauge. So our vacuum gauge is right here. So we're gonna read this sticker. And it says, attention. After shipment, pointer on gauge may not rest at zero due to internal case pressure buildup caused by temperature variations, significantly reducing the gauge's accuracy. Move fill plug lever to the open position. This will vent the gauge and restore accuracy. So there's a little yellow switch on here that goes from open to closed. So we're gonna flip it to the open position. Performance will not be affected if the lever is in the closed position. Lever in open position ensures an accurate gauge reading. The gauge is filled with glycerin. To keep glycerin in the gauge, only vent the gauge as needed. And then again on here, uh, vent gauge, remove sticker. So. If you want to read what your gauge says, it has to be in the open position. It can be in the closed position when you are certain
that it is reading accurately, but if you want to refer while you're milking and see what it's at, it needs to be in the open position. Uh, let's see. Okay, so we're going to turn on the system. We're going to push the power button on back left corner of unit. We're going to turn white supply valve to a closed position. Pulsator should be clicking, which it is. We're going to open the white supply valve that is connected to the milk collection container. Pulsator should still be clicking, which it is. Try sticking each inflation to the palm of your hand to ensure that it grabs on. If it does, attach teeth ends of inflations together until they grab onto each other. Okay, so they have grabbed onto each other. Now we can adjust the milking pressure if we need to. There should not be any need to adjust the pulsator as they are sent for goats before they leave here. But if you do need to, it gets recommended uh, uh, pulses per minute on the back, and there's a little set screw on the back of the pulsator that you can adjust that. So uh, for adjusting milking pressure, we'll be using this regulator. To increase the pressure, we'll rotate it clockwise, and to decrease it, we'll rotate it counterclockwise. And so right now, it's beginning at about 10. So we could increase that. So right now it's about 12. You may hear a little bit of hissing noise out of the regulator that is totally normal. Okay, so key to remember, you can only trust the reading on the gauge if the gauge is vented, which we had it vented. Uh, next step, clean and sanitize system. Refer to user guide for directions. We also have a video on the website on how to clean. Uh, step 11, you are now ready to milk. Uh, before you milk, remember to add a filter if you want to filter your milk while it's milking. So to add a filter, you would lift this up, place a filter in the lid, and then put that back on. Okay, so to milk, we're going to push the power button on. We're going to make sure our supply valves are in a closed position. Once the pulsator is clicking, then we can open the supply valve that is connected to our collection container. Attach inflations to clean teeth. And then we'll visually inspect the vacuum pressure on the gauge and make adjustments as necessary. A few more notes. Uh, again, like I said before, do not attempt to milk two goats or sheep at a time until you are comfortable with the milking procedure. The, this only applies to six CFM systems. Uh, know that any new process will take time to adjust for you and your animals. Be patient. And no milk machine is as efficient as a baby goat or your hands. Again, be patient and have realistic expectations. Also, re reminder, use your guide in the box. Make sure that you read through this and understand how your system works. Uh, included in here are different uh, ways to configure your jars or your buckets. Uh, you could milk, um, if you have a second jar here, you could attach your supply line to that jar and then have a short hose from this jar to this jar so that you fill this up and it would overflow into this. So you collect almost two gallons of milk that way. Uh, you could, with this setup, you can attach another jar just like this and milk each goat into their own jar. Uh, you can also milk into a bucket. Also included in the user guide is lots of handy maintenance and troubleshooting information. Uh, on the back of your unit, there is a uh, plate that tells you what the baseline test performances were here before your system left. And then the user manual tells you how to perform those baseline tests and depending on your results, what may be the issue. So if you're, if you're having any issues, oftentimes uh, the answer is right here, but please feel free to reach out to us and we'll be happy to help with any issues uh, you have with your system. Thanks, have a great day.